Every year for the last 15 years, a company called Planning Perspectives has gone out and interviewed hundreds of suppliers in the automotive industry, asking them what they think about how it is to work with the automakers. And joining me right now is the head of Planning Perspectives, John Henke is a PhD. He's also a professor of marketing at Oakland University in Rochester, Michigan. And John, it is so good to talk to you again. Pleasure to be here, John. Your study has shown that automakers who have good relationships with car companies actually increase their profitability. In fact, your latest survey shows that if GM, Ford, and FCA, as well as Nissan, would do some things right, more like Honda and Toyota, that they could add $2 billion to their bottom lines, or certainly their operating profit. So, John, I, I, I got to believe that the vice presidents in charge of purchasing are pretty smart people here, and yet you're showing them that they've got more money that they could be picking up along the way. What, what's your assessment of these executives? Well, there's no, there's no question that there's opportunities to make a lot more money through, uh, through improved relations, and there's no question that everyone that, to a person is unquestionably sincere in trying to to uh, get uh, better relations with their suppliers. I mean, they're out there proselytizing every chance they, they get that that's very important to them, and indeed it is. And I mean, you talk to suppliers, they unquestionably believe them. Uh, and there's no question when we look at the data that they ac actually, you know, understand what they're, they're tr that is, the suppliers understand what the VPs are trying to do, and indeed do believe them, because in, in fact, in our annual study, they tend to be rated, in, in, in uh, the case of a couple of the OEMs, higher than the salespeople are rating the people they're working with in the corporation from the standpoint of building trusting relations. For example, at FCA, Tom Finelity is rated higher than the people who work for him, and it's the same case with Steve Kiefer at GM and the people relative to the people he works for him. Very interesting. Well, let's go through some of them, you know, because your survey shows that Toyota's the best of them all out there. No Suppliers question. love no to work with them. And that's run by a guy named Robert Young. He's right. the vice president of purchasing at Toyota Motor Engineering. And uh, what's your assessment of how he's working and why is he getting such a high rating from all the suppliers that work well, for he, Toyota? He is, he is clearly the highest rated uh, uh, VP from the standpoint of being perceived to trust, uh, to build trusting relations, and so are his people. And that's because over the last couple of years, they've taken steps to regain the Toyota way of doing business. They had lost it. Oh, yes. On, there's no question about that. The recession, uh, the tsunami, the floods in Indonesia caused them to be more focused internally than they ever ever had to be uh, in, the, in the history of the corporation, as far as I can tell. And now, now that things have settled down, the markets are coming back, they have the time that they can, they can look at internally and say, are we really doing things the way we should be doing them and the way we have always done them, notwithstanding the last couple of years? And indeed, they've taken steps to do that, and it's showing in the results. They have, they, uh, have increased for the second time in the year, uh, second uh, year in a row, and they have continued to, to be in first place. Tom Lake is the vice president of purchasing for Honda in the U.S. Yep, and the... Uh, also very close to Toyota. Oh, yes. Oh, no, no question about that. And also thought of extremely highly right behind uh, Bob Young from the standpoint of working for Trusting Relations. He publicly stated last year when he saw the results that the previous 12 to 18 months, because they had been relatively flat coming out of uh, the downturn, that they decided internally to put every in their, everybody in their purchasing department back through the basic Honda philosophy training, which is respect for the individual. And that has, and he said, it's beginning to pay off because they, they, had, they had improved somewhat uh, uh, last year. I think what we're seeing is the carryover now where it's, it's improving more. And in fact, their improvement rate was greater than Toyota's rate this year, and, and if you look at it and you just extrapolate it out, they should theoretically pass Toyota. I don't think next year, I don't think Toyota's going to allow that, though. Yeah, Toyota does not sit on its hands. No. Even though they're at the top, to Toyota and Honda, they're not nearly as good as they were a decade ago. Oh, no, they've got a very long way to go. And that's, they, they've got to get back to the, just some of the fundamentals also. We've, our, our research has identified, and I say our because there's a number of colleagues at different universities around the country that have worked with me on this. And we've, we've identified 
three areas that, that have a difference, make a difference in, in supplier relations. One, they have to have the right business practices, and the buyers who are working with you and dealing directly on a day-to-day -day basis with the supplier uh, uh, salespeople have to be, at, be at, and create the right foundation upon which then you can uh, implement the variables that actually impact and drive the relations. They still are a bit behind where they were relative to the fundamental basics business practices that they've got to improve, and they also have to get their buyers a little bit better than what they are. They're, they're among the best, but they still are not as good as they were back in the 20 to, uh, 20, uh, to 2004 or 5, so on, when they were much higher than what they are. Well, maybe that training will get them back on that. Yeah, path. absolutely. Tom Finelli, as you mentioned earlier, vice president of purchase uh, at FCA, uh, and boy, their numbers are going down. Oh yeah, no, there's no question about it. But interestingly, he, as I mentioned earlier, is rated higher than uh, his sale, his buyers and so on. But where his real challenge is, of the, I mentioned the business practices, there are 17 that we identified. They are ranked dead last in 16 of them. So the fundamental groundwork that needs to be in place to build good relations is not there at, and certainly not to the extent that it is in the other OEMs. And, and so he's just got to get focused on, on, on that. Uh, General Motors is now run by a guy named Steve Kiefer, yep. Vice President of Purchasing. GM also way down the list and sinking. Yeah, no question. But Steve, but, but Steve oh. got ranked high by the by the supplier. Yeah, that's right. He was ranked third behind uh, Bob Young and, and, and Tom Lake. And where they have been. And so he, he the transition from Grace Liebeland to him has not made much difference from the standpoint of, of the suppliers. They see him as they saw her who saw her not unlike Bob Sosha, you know. So I mean, they've they've got they've unquestionably been. GM has picked the right people to to come in, and he like uh, like uh, Tom Finelli was rated higher as I mentioned, uh, being third. But they too have got to look at some of the fundamental uh, aspects of of their business, and they've got to get their buyers more incentivized to act the right way. That is, in fact, act in a manner that is consistent with what he's telling suppliers he wants to do with, the, with their relations. Over at Ford, Hao Tai Tang is the vice president of purchasing. Yeah, Ford he, seems to be adrift, oh, according to your numbers. They, they haven't, haven't changed much. And I know he's been out doing uh, what he has to do to, to let people know. It isn't yet reflected in the numbers. But I think that's because there just is so much more to, to, uh, to do there, they're, they're doing okay. They're certainly much better than, uh, than uh, FCA and, and uh, GM and Nissan, having passed them this year, but they still have a long way to even get close to, uh, to Honda and Toyota. So he, again, he's got to look at his buyers. He's got to look at some of the fundamental practices. Uh, you mentioned Ford past Nissan. It's more like Nissan sunk below Ford, yeah, isn't it, though? There's Rebecca Vest is... Uh, the one who's running purchasing over at Nissan. And what's happened? I mean, they were doing great, and they've just taken a nosedive in the last I year. I think what happened, she certainly knows what to do. She's an old Toyota hand, a very high, uh, highly regarded Toyota hand who was hired away about uh, six, eight years ago, and the intent was to get her to run it, uh, the organization initially, at some point, and now she is in charge. The problem is that the best that we can tell from reading uh, uh, what's in the media and then what the, what the data tells us is that they have had such enormous pressure placed on them to get their costs down that it's it's been transferred into adversarial uh, relations on the part of on the part of her uh, her people. So this is clearly where she's got to find a way to incentivize the behavior the uh, behavior of the buyers to be exactly what she's been telling her suppliers she wants to do, and that is going to be critically important. Not unlike FCA and, and uh, General Motors. And, you know, we should point out, too, to the viewers that this isn't just your opinion. This is what hundreds of suppliers are telling you oh, what's yes, going yeah. on. We are, we are going out. When we look at certainly the, the Detroit three, we're looking at 250 to 300 buying situations where we're talking about someone supplying tires to, to GM, for example, braking systems to Ford and so on. Not just tell me how are things with you. And so... You know, many times when you talk to people, or I'm sure, and I know the, the, the purchasing people, 
uh, and the heads of purchasing here, gee, things are really going, and indeed they are. But they're talking to only 15, 20, maybe 100 people. We're talking to hundreds of people to, and, and in the trenches, not up at the high levels. Also, you looked at uh, BMW and Volkswagen, but they're sort of one plant operations. Right. I know you wanted right. to concentrate on the full line <laughs> manufacturers, but BMW beats everybody. Yeah, they always have. I, we started doing uh, surveys uh, that involved BMW back in the early 90s in Europe, and they, they have always been regarded very, very highly because they, they have, as long as I've known them, which is now approaching 30 years, they have always focused very heavily on having very good relations, not unlike Honda and Toyota, with very select group of suppliers, and they've been able to main that, maintain that over the decades. On the other hand, the first exposure to VW, and this is now not all of VW, but the VW brand in, uh, uh, in Europe, is they had the worst relations, and they are continuing that here, certainly in Chattanooga and Pueblo. Look, it's a fascinating su uh, survey. Uh, if anybody wants to check this out, go to the website, www.ppi1.com. We'll also have the link in our website. John Henke, thanks so much for coming in. I've been uh, an avid reader of your report ever since it came out, and this latest one has got a lot of information for people in the industry. Great. Thanks, John. It's always a pleasure. AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems. Breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles.